Hi there. In this video, we're going to continue on the topic of authentication. We're going to create a user model and look at how users can be securely authenticated. First, let's generate a new user model. For that, we can use the Rails generator. So I can do bin Rails generate model user and we'll give it a username. And for now, I'm not going to worry about the password. Password should be encrypted. And so they're a little bit more tricky. For now, let's just have a username. There we go. That's generated a migration, a model file, a model spec, and it's also generated a factory. Now that we have the model, we can start piecing together the authentication flow. In the controller, I'm going to remove the uh, username uh, parameters that we're printing out. And instead of doing that, I'm actually going to use them to find the user. So I can do user find by username params require username, so we're getting the username from the params or raising an error if it's not supplied. Next, we can call the token authentication service and pass in the user. To do that, I'll assign the result of this user query to a variable, and I'll pass that in to the authentication token service. So let's just remind ourselves what that looks like. The authentication token service um, is here and it has a call method, a call class method. I'm going to call that and I'm going to pass in the user. In fact, we only care about the user ID, so I'm just going to pass that in. At this point, let's run the specs to see what's going on. We get a migrations are pending error. It's because we've added a new uh, model, which will require a new migration to be run. And Rails won't let us run the tests until we do that. So I can do bin Rails db migrate. There we go. Let's try to run the tests again. Okay, and now we get an undefined method error. It's because I'm calling ID on user here, but the user doesn't exist. So let's take a look at the spec that that's coming from. It's coming from this uh, authentication API test. So we're calling the authentication controller here, and it's trying to find, with our new logic, is trying to find a user with the username bookseller99 but it's not able to find one and that makes sense because we need to actually set up that user in the database so we need to do some test setup here to do that I'm going to use a factory and I'm going to define it in a let here so I'm going to do uh, user I'm going to say factory bot create user and the reason I can do that is because I have the factory gem installed and when I ran the Rails generator it created this uh, user factory for me here by default if I don't supply anything it will set this uh, as the username but instead what I'm going to do here is provide the username as bookseller99 and then what I can do is in the params here, I'll pass in the uh, user username. What this will do is not only uh, pass in the username, but these lets are lazy loaded. So when I call this, it will actually uh, run factory, factory bot create to 
create our user in the database. So let's run this test now. Now we have a new failure and this one is to do with our um, authentication token service. If you look here, you can see that we're calling the authentication token service and we're passing in the user ID, which is correct. However, if I open the service, we currently don't allow the user ID to be passed in. So let's change that now. I'll add a new param. I'll call it user ID. And I'm also going to change this payload to use the user ID. So I'm going to say user ID equals user ID. So what that will do is in our JWT payload, we'll now have the user ID, which is going to be really useful when uh, authentic authenticating for other endpoints, we can actually decode the JWT and then check the user ID. Now, if I rerun the spec, you can see that it's passing and I'll rerun the whole test suite. And you can see they're all passing now except for Authentication token spec. Um, ah, yes, so we have another test here, which is specifically for the authentication token service. You can see here that we call described class.call, and all we need to do here is pass in a user ID. It doesn't actually need to be a real user ID, we could just pass in, um, you know some some integer let's rerun this test now and it's failing now because the we've changed the payload here instead of a test blah we have user id and user id one there we go again i'll rerun the whole test suite and all our tests are passing. I'm also going to remove this pending spec here so we don't have the uh, annoying sort of yellow output. Uh, I'm just going to delete that. Now if I run the specs, we just have the 12 examples and zero failures. Before we start working on the password, Let's do a manual test to verify that everything is working. The first thing I'm going to do is create a user in the database. Right now our database is empty, so we need to create a dummy user for us to do authentication against. I'll say user create username uh, book seller 99. There we go. So now we have a single uh, user in the database ready for authentication. Next, I'm going to jump over to the terminal and I'm going to run the server. And finally, in a new tab, I'm going to make a curl request to the authentication endpoint. So I'll say curl host http localhost 3000 slash api v1 uh, authenticate and I'll pass the header uh, content type application json and I can also supply a json body which will be a, a string and I'll have username, uh, oops, username bookseller99 and 
and a password which we're not actually using yet but I still need to supply it because it's a required param blah there we go let's see if this is working and there we go we get I can check the server you can see that we started a post to API v1 authenticate we have the params here the password is filtered out by default as a, as a security feature by rails however we are printing it out here and you can see here that we did an active record query we looked up the user from the database and then we returned it in fact the one thing we didn't do um, is actually return the token so let me run this again I'm going to add dash v and you can see here this is the response and we're getting back the token one two three what we should be getting is a jwt so let's see what's going wrong oops authentication controller ah of course so we are calling the authentication token service which is generating a nice JWT for us. However, we're just discarding it. We're not actually uh, returning it. So what I can do is assign this, this to a variable and then uh, render this out in the response. Now, if I call the API again, we get the token and this is a should be anyway a valid uh, JWT. To test that, I can copy it and jump over to the browser on uh, jwt.io and I can paste it in here. Oops, oh yeah, there we go. And you can see the algorithm type and there is our user ID. We can even add our secret key here uh, which we have in the token service. I can grab this HMAC secret, paste it in here, and you can see here it says signature verified, which means the JWT was uh, encoded with this secret. We now have the authenticate endpoint working end to end. It will generate a secure JWT for us that's unique to each user. It's not secured yet because no password is required, but we'll work on that soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.